It comes in a parcel. 6900 XT then. About 220 frames a second. 260 frames a second there for a second. Hello again and welcome back to another build guide. Yes, you can't get rid of me. I quite literally live here. We have the RX 6900 XT, in theory the world's most powerful graphics card, according to AMD, here on the table today. So is it going to be as good as they say? Is it going to pair well with a Ryzen 9 5900X? And is this gaming computer going to be the fastest in the world? Let's certainly hope so. I'm also incredibly excited to say that this video is proudly sponsored by Be Quiet and they've sent out a couple of their new goodies today and we're actually going to do a black and white themed PC in their brand new case. This is the Silent Base 802 and the thing that's so great about this chassis is that they've taken everything that was good about the 801, listened to a little bit of feedback and actually given you more flexibility. You can now actually go for a mesh front, mesh along the top as well and have a more open airflow design and then tune all your fans and still have a completely silent PC. So in this video we are actually going to do a full build guide. We're going to go through everything that's in this rig. We're going to tell you what's what, what's hot, what's not, and of course show those all important 4K gameplay benchmarks as well as a few other resolutions actually so you know how the latest games perform with this 6900 XT when paired with this Ryzen processor. It is going to be fantastic. The first thing to do is actually to make yourselves a little bit of room and grab the motherboard and take it out of the box. And the motherboard that we're using here today I've used very recently and the reason for this is because there aren't really that many motherboards that are ready to go for next gen Ryzen out the box and if you saw my last video you can find this in the top right hand corner of your screen yes I was working out where my left and right is what of it but if you did watch that video you'll know that updating a B550 or X570 motherboard that has USB support for flashback it's usually called like BIOS flashback or something similar is actually fairly simple but it's not something everyone's going to feel comfortable doing so you can alternatively look Look for a board like this which is essentially the same as the others but you know it's going to come with a brand new BIOS ready for the next gen Ryzen. This is Asus's Dark Hero, it's a crosshair board and this is very high end. I want to stress that you don't have to go for something quite as expensive as this if you don't want to. You've got better audio support, you have a ridiculous amount of USBs on the back which is useful if you, I don't know, love RGB and it's RGB overload in your room or something. But then fundamentally as well it does support PCI Generation 4 on multiple ports as well so if you want to go for Gen 4 like we're doing here today and then grab another one later down the line, you're not limited by what would be a B550 chipset. It is a little bit of a shame that it only comes in black though, I think it would have been ideal if it was white for this particular build, but you know, we're going to go with it. Which now means we need to move on to our CPU, the Ryzen 9 5900X. There are 12 cores inside this tiny thing which blows my mind every time. Obviously you can get CPUs like the 5950X that have even more, but I'm telling you it would be pretty pointless on a gaming PC. Even this is probably a little bit overkill, but fundamentally the single core performance on this thing is better than what you get in Intel, which translates into better gaming performance. So regardless of whether you want to go for like a 4K 60fps machine, or maybe a 1080p 360, this thing is going to be able to handle it in spades. I've never understood that phrase, in spades, what does it mean? I mean, are we talking about spades like the cards or an actual, like, spade? Am I digging myself a hole at the moment? Either way, grab your CPU out of the box. Take a look at it, but do handle it very carefully. If you bend one of the pins, it's pretty much game over at this point. And then you can grab your motherboard. Whee! Don't do that. Just grab your motherboard's little lever, open this up. Requires a little bit of force, but then with this next bit, you drop it into the socket, making sure that the gold arrow is actually lining up with the arrow on the board. And this requires no force whatsoever. You can sort of wiggle it a little bit until it just drops down, and then you use the lever to secure it. If you're having to force anything, I promise you, you're doing it wrong. The next bit is arguably the easiest thing in any gaming computer, regardless of whether you're building it from scratch or upgrading one you already have, and that is installing the RAM. And here we're using some Spectrix D50, but XPG loved my last couple of videos so much they asked me if I wanted a white kit. And I said, yes, I'm building a black and white PC. Please, please, please loan it out to me. So they have. And this RAM is incredibly well built. It's very solid. But fundamentally, it's not as expensive as something like Corsair Dominator, which I've always liked. But I mean, I don't really understand why people spend so much money on RAM, to be honest. Unless you're going for like a show build. I mean, it's not going to get you more performance, right? Here we're using 16 gig. And some people might think that's not enough. But easy solution for you. Double it up, get 32. But for a gaming computer, I've not really really ever seen a game need more than 16 at the moment. This is 3600 megahertz RAM, which is going to be useful for Ryzen. 
use slots two and four, and then just slot your two sticks of RAM into place until it clicks. Next up, it's time for the SSD. This is PCIe Gen 4, which isn't essential, but if you're going for like a high-end setup like we have here, it sort of makes sense to pair everything together. And in the future, I think this may well make a big difference to games, but it's a case of watch this space at the moment, really. This one is the VP4100, catchy name as always, from Patriot or Viper Gaming as they're branded here. Just grab a slightly smaller screwdriver and then take the heatsink usually off the top slot. Sometimes you might have to go for a different one, but I've not really come across any instances that this would be the case. The only thing to watch out for is that because this has a heatsink on it, you're gonna have to make sure that the heatsink can actually be removed from your motherboard. Otherwise you have to cut it off like I did with an ASRock board, which is bad. Grab the M.2 drive out of the box and then marvel at just how tiny it is. To be fair, this one is slightly bigger because of that heatsink. You can see this is gonna keep it nice and, well, cool. I say nice and cool, it's going to get hot, right? It's going to get warm, but it's not going to overheat. Just insert this into the slot. There's only one right way of doing this, so you can't get it wrong. Then using a smaller screwdriver once more, screw it down and into place. And with that, we now have our completed motherboard combination, which does look a little bit weird at the moment with the white RAM, but bear with me, it is going to get a whole lot better once we put it inside our case. Let's get this case ready though, and something that is also quite neat about this is you have little buttons on the back, push it and then the case just pops off. Nice and easy, no sort of resting or screws to fit or anything. It's the same with the back piece as well. Just obviously grab all of your accessories and screws from inside the basement. It's at this point that you can really see just how flexible this case is. There is so much stuff going on here and it doesn't matter what you wanna put inside, this can pretty much accommodate it. It can actually also be inverted as well, which is pretty cool. So if you wanna go for something completely different, I've actually done this before. You can find that video in the top round corner if you wanna see what this looks like inverted. I do think it's a little bit of a missed opportunity though that they didn't include any white fans in this case. I guess it's like a cost thing. I mean, not everyone wants them, so you know, why pay for something you're not necessarily gonna get the benefit of? Which is why I do actually have some upgraded fans to install here today. We're going for some shadow wings and these ones are white. There we have then our installed fans. You can now get a real feel, I think, for the design of the system. Now would be the time to install the motherboard inside the case if we were going to use like an all-in-one liquid solution or obviously do a custom loop or something. But because we're going to use an air cooler, I would say it's far easier to actually do this on the box before you put it in. And the cooler that we're using here today is brand new from Be Quiet. This is the Shadow Rock 3. It is a perfect companion for what we're doing because not only does it use Shadow Wings fans, but it's white, a white cooler. You see, the theme is coming together marvellously. I think once again, the only thing to report is that while the cooler is this really swish white, there's a nice finish on that actually, it's, uh, it's looking pretty good. The fan is black, which is fine, but I sort of wish I had another one to swap this out to actually, because, well, it, it's, it's, it's gonna be black and white, but it, it's not gonna quite match everything else. Let's play the game of how easy is this gonna be to install, because recently, Be Quiet stuff has actually been some of the best out there, but back in the day, hit and miss. So you just remove the default AM4 bracket that's on the board, then put these four tiny little post type things on top of the motherboard socket. Try not to drop it on the floor would be a good idea. The reason that you do this on the motherboard is because the back plate is essentially pushing up against itself, whereas if you put this in the system, you'd sort of have to like fiddle about holding it at the same time, and that's, that's not simple. Then you can get these AM4 mounting brackets. Next up, it's thermal paste. Plop your CPU cooler on top. Insert this little metal bar so that it sits on top of that. And then once again, you just screw this down into place. When it comes to installing the fan, you can do this now or once you've put the motherboard inside the case. You just grab these little hooks and insert them into the holes and then just clip it on really. Remembering of course to actually plug that fan into the CPU header on your motherboard. Now is the time for action though, so we can actually drop our motherboard into the case, just lay it down flat. Make sure that you're using the right standoffs. If you're using a full-size ATX motherboard like we are here today, then it's pretty much ready to go. Especially bearing in mind that the IO shield is actually pre-fitted as well. So just grab your motherboard and gently slot it in so that it fits into the hole nice and snug. I've got a sneak peek and it is looking absolutely divine. Once the graphics card goes in there, I'm telling you, you're gonna go, all right, Centric, that is well-themed. Congratulations are in order, best PC builder ever. Can you see why I was getting so excited now? Take a look at that. 
All we need now is that graphics card and I think it will complete the set. Don't jump the gun too soon though, because this is such a big enclosure, we may as well put the power supply in next. And here we've gone big, this is a straight power 11. And a little disclaimer, I would advise going for a slightly higher wattage than this. This is a 650 watt power supply, but for something as powerful as this, getting a 750 or 850 is gonna give you a little bit more headroom. I'd be surprised if this didn't work. What I've got here, like that. Oh, oh, there you go, you see? Do, do you want this to happen? No. No, you don't. This is platinum rated for efficiency though, so it should be a little bit easier on the old electricity bill. And because this is fully modular, of course you only do need to use the cables that you actually need to use in your build. And the other benefit of a be quiet power supply is, as the name would suggest, they are incredibly silent in operation. You never hear the power supply these days, to be honest. It is awesome. The cables that we're using here today are ATX, CPU, SATA, and PCIe. We don't need no Molex. Just unscrew this little bracket that you find on the back. Attach it to your power supply so that the fan is actually facing downwards. Then you can grab that big bulk of cables, feed it through, and then this just slides in and secures back into place. Cable management shouldn't be very difficult at all. Just feed all of the cables to their respective places. So we're gonna do CPU, ATX through. We've got all the different fans to plug into the different connectors. With the fans, actually, it's worth noting that you've got a little hub here, which is pretty cool. So if your motherboard doesn't have many ports, or maybe you just want full control from the case itself, then you can just plug into here, use SATA power, and then just, well, have a fan controller ready to go. Of course, plugging it in shouldn't give you any trouble either. This is the big ATX that I've just connected here, this big dangly one, which then leaves the CPU, which is this little socket here. Wiggly cables is a good way of showing you actually, isn't it? Now you can bring some of the other cables into play. Here we have the USB-C, which is of course for the case front panel, as yes, USB-C is now refreshed. Plug that in till it clicks. Again, this is just below the ATX. Just below that, you've actually got USB 3 for your traditional USB A style devices. Big blue connector. Get this next up wrong and you won't have a PC working at all. It's very simple though, it's the front panel connections. Reset switch, power switch, HD LED, power always goes at the top, negative on the right. While you're down here, you also wanna do HD audio. This is for your front panel case for headphones and things just here. You can plug in those fans now. So we're gonna use the fan connector around the back. There's just one cable that basically talks to the motherboard and sends a signal. So I've plugged this in down the bottom. All of the case fans will go into that hub, but then that CPU fan is of course attached to the motherboard as this is the safest way to do it. But this is where things start to get very interesting indeed, as here we have the RX 6900 XT. Welcome to the red team. Oh, uncompromised 4K gaming. Oh, it comes in a little packet. It comes in a parcel. Hey, there we go. And actually it's quite similar to the 6800 XT, to be honest, it's not really any major changes there. This is a two and a half slot card, but as you can see, we do have a little bit of a red accent along the top, which is gonna mess with our pure black and white theme here. Are you ready? Woo! That's too red for my liking. I said this in my review of the 6800. I said, if you were going for a very specific theme, the red might upset you. And here I am, upset. On the plus side, our build is actually almost complete. We just need to plug in our power to the graphics, and I think that is it. Maybe if we add an RGB strip and set it to red though, it'll fix the problem and all look like it was planned. I'm really starting to think maybe I should do an inverted water cord build in this custom loop. Let me know if you wanna see that down in the comment section below. So here we go then, will we have some action? So far so good. I'll tell you what, that is not bad. The RGB definitely helps here because there aren't really any other lighting sources. I mean, you've got a little bit going on with the graphics card and the motherboard, and I suppose the RAM as well. But the whole thing does seem to sort of sit quite well. It's a great little ecosystem we've got going on here. And I absolutely love the case with this cooler. It is a perfect pairing. But let's get Windows installed, enable XMP, and show you the games. I'm looking at the wrong camera. That camera has died. Here we are then, it is a new day, everything is set up and working, and we're currently playing some Godfall at the moment. Which, I'll be honest, isn't the most engaging game I've ever played, but in terms of graphics, I honestly think this is probably the best looking game you can get on PC right now, that is like a general release without mods or anything. It looks absolutely phenomenal, and the thing is, we're actually running here at a really good frame rate, we're getting, what's that, around about 60 to 75 frames a second. This is an absolute max setting, so epic, with ray tracing enabled. I hear so many 
many people say that AMD graphics cards can't run ray tracing, and I think that this is a prime example that that just isn't true. You do take a slight hit to the frame rate, but it's not actually as dramatic as I would have thought. But something that is incredibly important that you really do need to know if you're looking at buying this GPU is that I would highly not recommend getting a 650 watt power supply. What I've got here, like that. Oh, oh, there you go, you see? You see? That is a prime example of why 650 watts on this system is just not recommended whatsoever. I would recommend that you get probably an 850 or higher to be on the safe side. Moving on, you guys have been asking for this for ages, but I didn't want to deal with a 180 gig download, but it's only about 80 now. I mean, come on, Call of Duty Warzone. This is of course max settings at 4K and you can see we're absolutely bossing it here with around about, what's that, 120 frames a second or so while skydiving as we hit the floor. I would expect it to increase a little bit. Oh, ah, gunfire, gunfire. Gunfire, 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 no! I was too busy worrying about the frame rate. Around about 120 to 140 frames a second, really, depending on whether you're inside or outside. Yes, boys! But what about 1440p? <laughs> Whoa, that is a massive increase. About 220 frames a second. <laughs> oh. <laughs> There you go, if you want to play competitive on something like the HP Omen X, which is 1440p, 240Hz, then yeah, you're going to be getting close to maxing out the display. And this is at high settings as well. Max settings, I should say. So really not going to be an issue. I'm sorry, Ajax. Just, just wait a second, boy. From one battle royale to another, here we have Apex Legends, again running at 4K resolution. And pretty similar frame rate, actually. It feels slightly smoother around about 140 to 150 frames a second. Not really that much in it, to be honest with you. Oh, no, 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 I'm going to blow it, I'm going to blow it, I'm going to blow it. Come on, don't let me down. Yes! Still got it. 1440p, massive increase. We have had to unlock the frame rate in the command menu, but we're getting 260 frames a second there for a second. Now that we've stabilised, around about 230 frames a second. 230 frames a second at 1440p. That is super impressive. What is this resolution? This is uh, this is not ultra. I mean, look look at the size of the bar. 640 by 480. That would explain it now, wouldn't it? So yes, for our final game, we have here Doom Eternal. So this is 4K again, max settings. And the frame rate is around about 170 frames a second. I don't know what to say. It just feels so fluid. And yet you can see all of that detail. It is just incredible what's possible now on a gaming computer, it really is. And yes, a thousand pounds on a graphics card isn't exactly uh, an easy amount of money, but the thing is, all of this performance does sort of trickle down all of the range. I mean, if you look at the most recently released 3060 Ti, I couldn't believe the amount of performance you can get for, at the RRP at least, £369. And yes, it is a very difficult time at the moment as you just can't really get hold of any of these things, but rest assured that things will get better and you will be able to buy these graphics cards eventually. But what we've actually put together here today is just so impressive. I think in terms of the chassis, I think it would look a little bit better if you had more stuff in it here. It's definitely crying out for some, I don't know, drives or at least like a custom loop or something there that would probably make it look just that little bit better. But in terms of thermals as well, I mean, this graphics card runs hot. We're getting around about 78 degrees, which actually isn't too bad, bearing in mind the power draw of this thing. That's pretty impressive if you ask me. And that's while making pretty much no noise at all. I mean, if you listen to this, so this is one of the most powerful gaming computers you can build right now, if not the most powerful, and it's barely making a noise whatsoever. If you have any sort of headphones or any just speakers at low volume, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to hear this. Let me know your thoughts though on this. Would you go for Team AMD or Team NVIDIA? Are we likely to see like a 3080 Ti in the future? If you do want to check out current pricing, you can find that down below. Smash that like button, get subscribed for more videos just like this, check more out on the end screen, but thank you for watching, I'll see you in the next one.